So welcome, in this episode, we're gonna show you how I just built an access door for future wire pulls and an installation of a 50 amp generator inlet box right here. Now this applies to if you're wiring up this box outside for a gas generator, we're wiring this up inside so we can run portable power stations, battery banks, in the event that we lose power here. And we can mount this inside because we have zero emissions with this. Now, if you're curious about videos for the external installation that I've done, I'll put that up here. If you're watching on YouTube, we'll put it down in the description. I also recently made a video showing a generator interlock kit. If you would like to see that installation, again, that'll pop up right here as well as in the description and i want to give a quick shout out to my friend evan over at country view acres he's actually doing a very similar setup that we are right now in his home and he has a very unique way of a manual transfer switch run to a sub panel so it's yet another solution and i think a pretty smart one as well for how you can wire up generators or portable power stations to power your home. So you may wanna check that out. I have a link to his channel down in the description. Now with all that said, let's jump into this. Let's go ahead and cut out the wall here, build this access door, and then I'm gonna show you how to wire this 50 amp generator inlet box right here. Keep in mind, if you're not comfortable with electrical or wiring, you should hire a licensed electrician. All right, I've showed y'all this trick before, but in case somebody new is watching, first of all, multi-tools, oscillating tools that have the blades that go back and forth, so handy for everything. I never realized how much I needed one until I finally got one. Take an old, dull cutting blade. This one was kind of for wood and metal. I have wore the teeth off. It's just a really old blade, but it cuts drywall perfectly. Don't throw out your old blades. So I've just trimmed the line on here. I do have one wire in here. I personally wired the house. I know every square inch of that wire is not in this wall. It's way back in this wall. No risk of cutting into anything here. When in doubt, throw the main power off before you ever go cutting into a wall. So what I'm trying to accomplish here, remove a big section of drywall, going down out the wall here to the outside of my house is that big box that has cable going to a generator plug already. We want to upgrade that. I'm eventually going to be bringing internet in through the house down the road here. They keep claiming we're going to get fiber. I'm assuming I have to pull the wire through the house. I don't know. And eventually we're probably going to bring solar power in here and have us a home backup solution somewhere in this pantry. And we're going to want to bring solar power in for charging. So this is an access panel to get me to all that and any future wire pulls that I may need to do. So check this out, excellent amount of room in here, all the way up to the bottom side of the panel. I can access my knockouts and pull wire, and that one wire you're looking at there, that goes to my outdoor generator plug, which happens to be about right there. So we'll just remove a little bit of foam, I can pull that out when it's time to upgrade it, and just refill my foam right back in. This is going to be perfect for giving me good, easy access. Now we got to make it look pretty.
Okay, for starters, let's talk ground real quick before we move into household wiring. We want to set the box up. So this box comes with a nut on a post on the back side right here, as well as up here. It also comes with a ground with two eyelets on the end and another one here. So long story short, the ground that's going to come in through this knockout right here, that's ultimately grounded to the whole house ground, as well as grounded to the earth outside, that ground is a path in case something were to ever short out on this metal box. Well, it can now follow the ground back to ground, not electrifying the box or ultimately passing through you to ground and electrocuting you. So grounds are important. And the reason we want to ground both sides of the box, whenever it's screwed together, well, technically everything's grounded. But if you come to service this box and take the front cover off, well, look, now it's no longer contacting this box. And if we ground just here, and we're shorted out in here somewhere for some reason. Well, this just became electrified and ultimately you did. So you wanna make sure you ground both sides of the box and it comes with the jumper wire to do that. We're gonna put one of these eyelet terminals on back in there. And then up here on this box, we'll connect both of these right here. But now you see green for ground here. We can put this ground in there and the ground that I'm gonna bring in on the wire from the main panel that's ultimately grounded outside, I'm gonna put in there as well and make sure they both clamp down tightly. All right, so we're back inside with the box that we just wired the grounds in and I'm gonna mount the box in this location right here because it's about the only place that it'll clear, allow me to get the wire in and not be in the way of the door and future wiring pulls that I'm gonna do. And I wanted to mention that because a lot of people will mention, hey, there's certain height requirements for receptacles. Keep in mind, this is not a powered receptacle. This is an inlet box, and there is no specific code requirements that I can find for inlet box heights indoors. You'll see some state must be 24 inches off the ground outdoors. I've got to kill power to do this, but just want to remind y'all, I'm going to knock out one of these knockouts in the bottom, like where that wire goes in. I'm about to pull this off and kill it. So I'll meet y'all back once I have power on and I'll show you exactly what I've done so it makes sense. Hopefully y'all can see with the lighting that I have going on here, but I have a three conductor wire here with ground. This is copper six gauge, which is rated for a 50 amp generator inlet box. If you were putting a 30 amp in, typically most people run a 10-3 wire. 10 gauge wires rated for 30 amps, 8 gauge, 40 amps, 6 gauge, 
50 amps and on. Now length of your wire does matter. There's charts on lines, but we're doing a very short run here, so we're perfectly fine to use our six gauge wire. You're gonna notice we have a black, a red, and a white. Because this generator inlet box is set up for 240 volts, you see we have three conductors here, plus a ground conductor on the side. So long story short, we're gonna send 120 volts down the black line, a second phase of 120 down this line. So two separate phases, and they're gonna share a common neutral. So how you have 120 volt power in a house is 120 volts on one line and a neutral to send it back down. How you have 240 volts is you have two separate independent 120 volt lines, and yes, they can share a neutral. And then we have that ground for direct path back to earth for safety reasons. So if you notice on the back side of my generator inlet box, I have W, well that's pretty simple, white. You have Y and X. That is either one of your hot legs. It does not matter which one goes where. They're two independent 120 volt lines. Makes no difference whatsoever. And then green for ground. Don't forget we are in a ground this system. Okay, so let me show what we got going on here before I close everything up. First, I wanna caution everybody. Even though you can throw the main breaker off right here, these two phases coming in, this is a 120 volt phase, this is a 120 volt phase from the transformer. Behind those yellow protective covers, that is still hot. It's everything beneath the breaker that you're throwing that is no longer gonna be hot. So there's still electricity in this panel. Always be careful. And before I show you this, this is my moment to tell you when in doubt, hire it out. If you have concerns or major questions about how to do your own electrical, you need to learn that before ever attempting it. Otherwise, you need to hire a licensed electrician. And disclaimer, I'm not a licensed electrician, so take what I say with a grain of salt. So this is the spot where my generator breaker goes, and it's because we have put an interlock in. Again, I've got a video down in the description if you want to see how to install one of those. When I put the panel back on, I'll show you. But as you can see, we have a red and a black. That is two 120 volt phases going down right into our plug. So we're gonna send two separate 120 volts back. Here's the neutral that comes up and out. We have landed it on the neutral bar, as well as right above it, we have landed the ground on that same bar. Here's a little education for you. This is my main breaker panel, my first means of disconnect according to the National Electric Code. So you bond neutrals and grounds. Right behind this panel is my meter box. There's no disconnect outside. We're not required to do that as long as they are back to back. Otherwise your first means of disconnect would actually be a big throw or disconnect that you have outside. So if you're installing one of these, you see that green screw right there? You see that in your panel? That means the neutral coming in right here is bonded to these bars to ground all the way through to the frame, everything. Neutral and grounds are bonded. If you don't see that green screw anywhere and you're on say a sub panel, here's my wires going to my outside sub panel, your one of these bars will actually be, your neutral bar will be separated from your ground bar. Ground bar will typically be mounted over here on the side of the panel. See all the extra screw holes there? You can put one there. Always separate your neutrals and grounds on your secondary means of disconnect, a sub panel. The reason that's important, because if you were back feeding a sub panel from a generator, well, you would not land your neutral and ground on the same bar. They would go to two separate bars. That's very important. This is my old outdoor generator plug, so I've just wire nutted it off. In the event that we have a major power outage and we run the uh, gas generator outside, I can come right back in here and just take these wires out, wire these in. Sadly, generator uh, you know, interlock kits only work for one breaker spot, so I wish I could have two breakers, but legally I can't back feed my panel in two different locations. I'll show you that in just a second. And what I've done here is use a double pole breaker. I actually need to go get a 50 amp breaker. I'm doing this for demonstration purposes right here because this is a 50 amp kit. And this wiring can handle up to 50 amps. I don't currently own anything that'll send that much power in here, but I may in the future. But what I want you to understand is while we have two hots coming down, a double pole breaker 
You see this, remember me telling you, they got a 120 volt phase coming in, a separate 120 volt phase coming in. See how it goes to two different bars? Every other breaker spot right here is on one or other of those phases. So when you put a double pole breaker in, well, it's connecting that phase and that phase to these two separate terminals, to two separate wires. A lot of people are in a misconception that all the breakers on this side are on that phase, all the breakers on that side are on that phase, but that's not true. Every other breaker is flip-flopping the phases that you see coming in up here. All right, so let's take a quick look at this generator interlock kit. This is as about as basic as you can do. But long story short, what this little slide lock does right here, this keeps us from having the main breaker on like it is right now, and us being able to flip this breaker on, sending power through the main back out those two lugs I showed you, and ultimately to the transformer outside, which could electrocute linemen. A lot of people backfeed a panel, just say put power into this double pole right here, and forget to throw off the main, which is illegal, and now you're putting your line workers at risk. At least something very basic like this keeps that from happening. So now I physically have to throw off my main breaker, slide this up, and then I can throw on generator power. All right, so here we are with the real test. Let's plug in this EcoFlow Delta Pro. Stations like this, portable power stations, is what I've ultimately done this for. Obviously, we're not gonna run a gas generator indoors due to the health concerns with that. But as we continue to test and review portable power stations on the channel, I wanted a nice solid hookup in here that we could test some of that out. And ultimately, we're gonna wind up with some sort of system, potentially this one right here, that's gonna be our main backup for the house. And now we have a nice clean area to put this in here. So I do wanna let everybody know real quick, this system is 120 volts only, but we're about to send power to both legs on either side of that connector to both sides of that box up there, essentially powering up all single pole breakers. Because this is 120 volts only, we're going to throw off every 240 volt breaker because it will not run them. This does not provide two separate 120 volt phases. Now, just so happens, you can put two EcoFlow Delta Pros together with a combiner and send 240 volts to this plug, essentially powering up anything we want in the house. Now there's limitations to that. You may have to power up large things like say a dryer one at a time. Hopefully, spoiler alert, we're gonna be testing some of that really soon on the channel. Thus another reason I wanted a very heavy duty and properly installed plug over here. Now with that said, I bought this adapter off of Amazon. This actually has a wire that crosses over in here and sends power to both sides of that box. Well, like I was telling you, you can see we're going to a four prong plug. Now, the other thing worth noting, since I went ahead and installed a 50 amp inlet box, well, these units are set up for 30 amp because that's the max they can provide with two of them together anyways. I've got another adapter right here that'll plug right in and convert from what's called an L1430R to the 50 amp plug. This is perfectly fine. We're just now running lower power through a plug that's designed to accept much higher power. That's okay. You don't want to do it the other way around, overpower a plug. And again, the reason I went ahead and put 50 amps worth of service in here is because I have no idea what we'll be testing or growing through in the future. Some of these units now are starting to get so powerful, eventually we're gonna need a 50 amp hookup. All right, so let's plug this in. Now in the event of a power outage, we're actually having a really bad storm outside right now. We can power this unit on, turn on the 120 volt power, and I'm about to flip and kill the main power in this breaker panel, flip over to generator power like I showed you by sliding that interlock. And I'm gonna go ahead and have every 240 volt breaker off because we do not need to send 120 volts to a 240 volt appliance in here. And in the event of using one of these in a power outage, you're just gonna to wanna to run critical things like say this deep freezer, your refrigerator, some fans, charge cell phones, maybe check the television, see what's going on out there in the world, things such as that. So no need to power up every single breaker in the house. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw off all these 240 volt breakers, and I'm gonna go ahead and kill all my single pole breakers and just flip them on one at a time 
once we swap over to generator power. All right, let's throw this main breaker off and go over to generator power, see if this works. All right, we are on generator power now on all of our single pole breakers in the house. Now I would recommend doing these slowly one at a time. That way if things like say compressors start kicking on and freezers and refrigerators, you're not just sending a tremendous amount of surge to your generator. Okay, so every single one of our single pole breakers are now on except for one outdoor one that's no need to be on. And look, we have a relatively efficient house, only pulling 266 watts right now. And you can see this unit's not completely charged. This isn't really a test about this, it's more about the plug. We just wanna let y'all know, now we have everything running in the house. Now that power's gonna go up as say compressors and stuff kick on. Maybe you run the microwave, that's gonna be probably our largest power user as far as 120 volts goes. Maybe the dishwasher on a heating cycle, but probably not gonna be running the dishwasher in a power outage. All right, so lights are on, fans are already running. You've got parasitic draw from things like the television, all kinds of stuff going on, stove, refrigerators, everything's lit back up. All right, so this was a successful install. Overall, not complicated. Wire's outrageous right now. The box, not too much money. A few adapters. I'll put all this down in the description if you wanna do that. Keep in mind, if you never have any intentions of upgrading to 50 amp generator power, which is a heck of a lot of power, you can do a 30 amp box, much smaller, more affordable wire. And don't forget, I've got videos down in the description showing me doing a 30 amp hookup on the outside, as well as that manual transfer switch. So there's a few different ways you can go about accomplishing this. So now we're powerful enough right here to run one or two of these and potentially move up to 240 volts. We're gonna be testing that very soon. That's been a huge request from y'all. And now we have really nice backup power inside. We don't have to go out in the midst of the storm or anything else. We lose power inside, real quick hookup, flip over two breakers, we're back in business and we're running very important things like this. All right, so hopefully y'all learned something. We have a lot more videos like this coming in the future. We'll catch you on the next one.